and we can all just hug and everything's going to be solved, okay? Uh, and according to the Bible, there's coming a seven-year agreement. The problem is, and this agreement's going to be involving the temple, the problem is in the middle of the peace agreement, it's broken. Now, what's going to bring about all this? Let's look at the fourth sign that I want to show you, which is warning Gog and Magog. And we recently had um, uh, uh, Joel Rosenberg at church, it was probably about a year ago, uh, and he wrote a book called The Ezekiel Option. And he's talking about what the book of Ezekiel talks about, the battle of Gog and Magog. Just so everybody understands, Gog and Magog is an end-time event that Judaism, Orthodox Jews say, this is an end-time event that's coming, a battle that's going to pit the nations of the world against Israel, and that's going to bring in the, th that's going to bring in the third temple. So, and again, they're not reading from a, the Christian theology, they're reading from the Old Testament. Uh, it's also in the, in the Quran. The Muslims also look forward to an event called the battle of Gog and Magog. In Surah 18. Um, and what is it? Ezekiel foretold a coming, a coming Russian Islamic invasion of Israel. Now we'll get more of this in a second. And it says, following this invasion into Israel, all the nations are going to come against Israel. Guess what? Israel wins. Israel wins. And so the Islamic world, the, the Russian world, all going to come against Israel, and Israel's going to win. And how's that going to take place? Why is that going to take place? It's going to be a supernatural event. And so, if you just look, if you get a chance to go in the Bible, read Ezekiel chapters 36 and 37. Ezekiel chapters 36 and 37 talk about the creation of Israel from the nations. How the Jews are gathered from all over the world and brought back into the land of Israel after a long period of desolation. In fact, a lot of you might be familiar with Ezekiel 37, Dem Bones Gonna Rise Again, that song. It comes from Ezekiel chapter 37. But then Ezekiel chapter, God bless you, Ezekiel chapters 38 and 39 refer to a future invasion into the land of Israel, okay? And then Ezekiel chapters 40 to 43 refer to a temple, a future temple that's going to be built. According to the Jewish understanding, Ezekiel 40 to 43 is talking about the third temple. But it actually it's talking about the fourth temple. But we'll talk more about that later. So Ezekiel chapter 38 verses 7 and 9 read this. Prepare yourself and be ready, you and all your companies that are gathered about you, and be on guard. After many days, you will be visited. In the latter years, you will come into the land of those brought back from the sword and gathered from many people on the mountains of Israel, which had long been desolate. They were brought out of the nations, and now all of them dwell safely. You will ascend, coming like a storm, covering the land like a cloud, you and all the troops and many peoples with you. Again, what is this referring to? It's saying that you will be visited in the latter years, you will come into a land. Now, these are all qualifiers. A qualifier is like, for example, if I said everybody with a red shirt, Stan, anybody who had a red shirt would understand, hey, I'm qualified, okay? Well, here, this tells us about a future event. It says, after, in the latter years, you will come into a land of those brought back from the sword, gathered from many people. Where are they brought back? On the mountains of Israel, which had long been desolate. Where did they come from? They were brought out of the nations. Now all of them dwell safely. And it's talking about this, these, these armies, and it's very specifically mentions. It mentions Persia, which is Iran. It mentions Libya. It mentions Ethiopia. It mentions out of the far, Rush, in the, in the Hebrew, the word Rush means chief, or also means, can be taken as a personal name. Rush, out of the far north, and all his tribes are coming down. How they're coming against land Israel. And, but the whole purpose of, of Israel's victory is not for Israel to win. The whole purpose is that the nations of the world might know who God is. You see, right now, the nations don't know who God is. I mean, there's everybody has their different opinion, just like, in the, just like in the boat, when Jonah was in the boat. Everybody pray to your gods, okay? And everybody, in, in the world that we live in, it's called moral relativism and relative truth, that whatever you believe, whatever I believe, it's all equal. And God says, no, it's not. There is one truth. There is one God. I am the one God. And I'm going to show everybody who I am through the fulfillment of my words. And so, and in fact, that's what the Bible says. That God himself says, when this takes place, you will look back at the fulfillment of these words and you'll know that Ezekiel was a prophet. You'll know, you'll say, was this the word of the Lord that was spoken? So following Gog's defeat, Ezekiel gives plans for the Millennium Temple. And Islam, or Gog's defeat, will... Well, will make way 
for the temple. Right, right now, Israel cannot rebuild the temple because they know, in fact, the day that they took the Dome of the Rock uh, in the Six-Day War in 1967, Uzi Narkis and um, Shlomo Goren, the, the chief rabbi of Israel, where they were both there, the chief rabbi of Israel says, okay, now we're here. This is what we've been waiting for for 2,000 years, okay? We have control of the Temple Mount. He goes, now, let me go and get dynamite and let me blow this building down. This is the chief rabbi of Israel, Uzi Narkis, who invented the submachine gun. He says, okay, you shut your mouth and get out of here because... Do you want the whole world to come against us? They understand what's at stake. And so that's, what, that's, where, um, that's, what, that's what's going on right now. And that's what's going to lead to this battle of Gog and Magog. We already see a lot of this in place right now. The, I mean, the roots are there. Okay, When exactly is going to take place? We don't know. But again, Gog and Magog is going to set in motion. And once the Islamic power, once this threat is moved out of the way, Israel is then going to have the freedom to continue and to build the temple. So that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, let's take a, a 10 minute break, okay? Does anybody have any questions before I start? Uh, no, Muhammad, Muhammad had, a, had a vision that he went to Mount Moriah. So he was never really there. What's that? Yeah. <laughs> Mount Sinai? Mount Sinai were, was where um, Moses received the Ten Commandments um, from God. And that's in, uh, there's a couple of different areas where like some people think it's in a peninsula in Sinai. There's other, a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of archaeological evidence that that's actually uh, a mountain uh, uh, along the Red Sea on the border of Saudi Arabia and, and uh, Sinai Peninsula, Egypt. But I'll, that's another issue. Um, well, right, right now we're going to talk about the rapture and the tribulation, okay? Which is 